After some road bumps and injuries with the Wizards, Rui Hachimura is actually turning his career around with the Lakers. His career high came in his final Wizards game where he scored 30 points. In his first playoff game with the Lakers, he scored a team high 29 points off the bench. His minutes fluctuate based on who they're matching up against, but when he gets his minutes, the production is there. He's been playing so good for the Lakers, everybody's asking why he was traded for just Kendrick Nunn and three second round picks. Well, in 2019, Rui Hachimura was drafted ninth overall to the Washington Wizards. During his three and a half year stay with the Wizards, he played pretty decent with a team that really wasn't planning on winning anything anytime soon. But several injuries would cause Rui to miss almost 30 games every season he played for him. He didn't reach the height some people thought he would get to with the Wizards, but I don't think anyone was calling him a bust. With the rosters, bad play and injuries, it just wasn't working. But to give him up for Kendrick Nunn, they clearly didn't see that much value in him. The Lakers, on the other hand, did. He started a few games, but with the players they have, it just makes way more sense for him to come off the bench. Especially when he's able to give you 20 plus every other game without starting. Even the games he doesn't score a lot of points, it's usually because he doesn't take a lot of shots, literally because that's not what the team needed from him. Then when he does shoot, he's easily one of the most consistently efficient players on the Lakers. The only thing that fluctuates with Rui from game to game is how many shots he's gonna take. And the only flaw that Rui has is his defense, and I don't even know if you can really call that a flaw. He can play good defense, especially without fouling. He's more of a wall up and if he makes it, he makes it kind of player instead of trying to put extra contest into the shot. He's not a bad defender, he gives it 100%, he's just not the quickest defensively. But somehow was able to put Anthony Davis on one of the craziest posters I've ever seen when he played for the Wizards. Goodness, Rui Hachimura. During the regular season, he wasn't the most consistent, but to be fair, the entire team was playing with each other for the first time ever. The fact that the Lakers are even in the second round of the playoffs right now is amazing, so trying to fit into that team is going to take a second, even though they had a really solid record after the trade deadline. But in the playoffs, several role players for the Lakers have already stepped up, and Rui's one of them. Like I said earlier, in the first game of the playoffs against the Grizzlies, he had a team high 29 points. He was making everything he shot in a game where the whole Lakers roster was shooting really good. He shot 11 for 14 from the field and made 5 of his 6 threes. By the end of the third quarter, everybody knew he had the hot hand and is one of the main reasons that huge lead stayed where it was. He was able to hit basically every catch and shoot jumper he took and can even create his own shot, which is huge. The Grizzlies were talking trash to everybody in the playoffs, so to no surprise, Desmond Bain came out and said Rui's not going to do that again. So the very next game, although the Lakers did lose, Rui scored 20 points shooting almost 60% from the field and 50% from three. Then the very next game in game three of the Grizzlies series, he scored 16 shooting 60% overall and two for two from three. 16 points obviously isn't anything crazy, but for someone that's coming off the bench and shooting well for the third consecutive game, it's definitely something. Everybody has their role. It's also important because in the first three games of the series, he was the Lakers' leading scorer. His minutes went down a little bit because the next few games were blowouts, but fast forward to game two of the Warriors series and he's right back at it with 21 points. Again, almost shooting 60% overall and 70% from three. That was after going just two for two in 11 minutes in the first game of the series. He also did that in just 22 minutes. He's not consistently getting a ton of minutes and shots, but on the shots he is taking, they're consistently going in at an extremely high clip. Rui is by far the best scorer off the bench. He can catch and shoot, which is a must playing with LeBron, but can also rebound and play decent defense. But one of the most important parts of his game is how he can create shots for not just himself, but other teammates as well. He's an extremely good all-around player, and being the 6th or 7th man behind Schroeder, the Lakers are going to need him to continue playing how he is. Which, if he does, will completely change his life forever. He's on the final year of his deal, so in the offseason, he's going to be looking to get paid. 
The difference his contract could be by the end of his Lakers run versus what it would have been with the Wizards could be substantial. I think either way Rui and the Wizards both needed to move on and I really think if Rui doesn't re-sign with the Lakers, his time with them is definitely changing his career. Playing on a real championship team with veterans and trainers like Phil Handy, I think we're seeing just the beginning of Rui's turnaround. He's 25 years old and still has a good amount of basketball left in him. His perception is already changing, so we'll see where he's at even by the end of the playoffs. I'm on the road to 1000 subscribers, so it would mean a lot if you could hit that subscribe button to support the channel.